I'd like to share a recipe with you using rose hips in the form of a rose hip crab apple and rosemary jelly. Now, I think rose hips aren't used enough. You see them in the hedgerows all the time and you wonder, can you pick them? Should you pick them? What do they taste like? And how do you use them? Now, when it comes to picking rose hips, you want to pick them after the first frost. Um, so they're nice and squidgy like that. Look at that. Yeah. And that means all the flavour is going to come out of it a lot easier. If you, if you pick them when they're still quite hard and bright red, it takes a lot of cooking to get all the flavour out of it and everything like that. And you want to pick them when they're a little bit black and a little bit mangy like this, because that is when the flavour of these rose hips is at its best. Now to get this jelly jam started, we're going to cook our rose hips. Now you want about half the weight of rose hips to crab apples. Rose hips have a bit more of a stronger flavour when it comes to that sort of thing. But I think apple and rose hips kind of a similar flavour. Right, let's get this covered with water. Now rose hips take about twice as long to cook than apples, so we're going to get them on first. In the meantime, while we're waiting for these to cook, they're going to take about 10 minutes. We're going to prepare our apples. I'm using two types of apple here, one windfall from my tree and the other one's crab apples. And to prepare them, I'm just simply going to cut them in half. Now our rose hips are about halfway cooked, maybe slightly just over halfway cooked, but that's fine, that's fine. Now what I like to do at this stage is get a masher and just mash them up a little bit, just to break any skins that haven't broken up yet, and just to help to release all those flavours. There we go. And the aroma is fantastic, it's like, a, it's like a fruity tea with slight apple notes to it. It's, uh, it's delicious, delicious. It's going to make a fantastic jelly jam. I've cut these beautiful apples now into half um, and we're going to pop them in. You can see the lovely colour of these crab apples. It's not only is it going to give it a fantastic colour and add to the beautiful colour of the rose hips, it gives it a slightly tannic flavour to it, a slight acidity, so there's no need for lemon juice in this recipe. We're just going to pop them in. Twice the amount of apples to rose hips in weight. I'm just going to cover it with a little bit more water. Just enough water to cover. Now we don't want to cook this out too much because there's loads of pectin in it and if we cook it too much it will destroy it and that will mean our jam won't set. So cook it for about 10 minutes or so until everything's nice and soft. So these have been lightly boiling away now for about 10-15 minutes. Just giving it a little squeeze now with the spatula just to ease out any of that pulp that's remaining in the skins there. And here we are. We've got our sort of I don't know, what do you call it when it's at this stage? Our mash, our puree, our pulp, our thing? Now I bought one of these, a jam strainer. I feel a bit like my nan now to be honest, but it's changed my life when it comes to making jams and stuff. It's just super duper. Right, I'm going to strain this off now. Careful. You can't let any of it slip out into the liquid below because it will turn your jelly jam cloudy. A bit like me at the moment, cloudy. While that's dripping through, we're just going to push it to one side, and it's time for our 30 second tip. Now I love this, these are fantastic, look at these little bad boys, slows, I picked them at the same time as I picked the uh, rose hips, because they're best after the first frost. Now I'm going to show you how to make one of my favourite little Christmas time tipples, slow gin. Yes it is, it's slow gin. So simple to make. All you've got to do is fill your bottle up about a third of the way with slows. Just prick them gently, like so, just to release any of the, the juices that are in them. Now, we're going to pop in some sugar. So simple recipe. One third sugar, one third slows, and then top up the rest with gin. Woohoo! There's our sugar. Top up the rest with this lovely gin. Pop the top on. Give it a good old shake like that. There we are. Then all you've got to do is put it in a dark cupboard, shake it every couple of days for the first two weeks to dissolve all those sugars, and then leave it till Christmas time. Christmas time comes around, you decant off the gin, throw away the berries, and you've got your own little slow gin. Now I'm going to leave mine right here in the shed, and I'll shake it every couple of days, and at Christmas time I'll have my slow gin. Wicked! This recipe is just so beautifully simple. You take half the amount of rose hips to apples, you cover them with water, you boil them up, you strain it off, and you're left with this beautiful juice. Every pint of this, you put a pound of sugar. And this just came out perfectly, actually. 
to one pint. And we're gonna mi we're mixing our sugar. Keep it stirring so it doesn't catch on the bottom. And cook it out to it's a jam consistency. You now our jelly jam's been boiling away here now for about five minutes. This recipe sets really quick because there's loads of pectin in. So I think it's time to test our jam to see if it's ready or not. Now there's two ways of doing this. One, you can do it with a jam thermometer and you can take it to about 102 to 104 degrees centigrade and then that will give you the perfect setting temperature. Or you can do it the good old fashioned classical way, the way I do it. You just need a simple plate. <laughs> you take a little bit of the jelly jam and you sprinkle it onto the plate there like that. You let this plate sit in a cool place, preferably with a draught. This draught yield shed is perfect and let it sit there for a minute or two and if you drag your th finger through it and it doesn't go back together then you know it's ready. Ah, now you see this jam, I can pull my finger through it it runs a little bit too much, it's a bit too thin that jam it's not quite ready yet. Keep on cooking it out and try again in a couple of minutes. And now just from looking at it I can tell it's ready um, I put a bit on here, you can see on the plate already it's holding itself up, look at that you put your finger through it, the jelly stays still. It's set. Right, let's get this little beauty in our jam jars. Now I've sterilised these already, these jam jars, just by keeping them, popping them under the grill. You don't have to pop them under the grill at home, you can pop them in the oven at about 110 degrees centigrade for 25 minutes, or you can pop them in the microwave, that's what my mum does. And, uh, and they tend to, uh, like maybe two or three minutes on high setting, perfect. Um, also, I've boiled the lids. Now, don't put those in the microwave. <laughs> now, I'm just going to pour this in to our jam jars. Now, just to finish these off, to give it that little something extra, while the jam is boiling hot still, I'm going to take a sprig of rosemary and pop it in there. And that's going to scent our jelly jam beautifully. The reason why we don't put the rosemary in before is because it will burn in the jam making process. We don't want burnt rosemary, do we? And also, it looks really cool to have the... Um, to have the sprigs of rosemary suspended in the jelly jam. Pop our lids on. Oh, be careful because they are red hot. I've got these vine leaves which I've picked from my garden. And um, just pop them on top with a lackey band around, like so, and around. It's always good to do this while it's hot as well. It helps the leaves to dry out. So there we have it. Our rose hip, crab apple and rosemary jelly jam and our lovely, lovely, lovely Slow gin. Two lovely little stories from the hedgerow. Ding! Ooh, yummy, 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 yummy. Please oh, notes. It's going to be a real taste of the Mrs's Rose Garden. <laughs> I'm going to cover it with a little bit more water. Ah, I run out of water. You cover them with water. You boil them up. No, you don't. No, you don't. With every pound of this. Every pint of this, you put a pint. Oh, gee whiz, that's blooming up. Oh, goodness me, I've forgotten. Oh, what an idiot. Rosemary's sitting there, right there in front of me.